Hi, and welcome to Prue's Top 5. This time it's all about tension. This is my five top tips for achieving good tension. Now, first of all, what is tension? Uh, basically, it's just how tightly you pull on the cords. And with any sort of fibre, such as knitting or crochet or braiding, uh, because you're working with fibres, if you pull harder on them, you'll get a tighter effect. And so this will affect the finished product. So if you have very tight tension, your braiding, knitting or crochet, uh, will be smaller and tighter and firmer. And if you have very loose tension, your work will be looser and larger and more flexible. Now, to a certain extent, these are just the way you work and you need to just take that into account. So if you know you have tight tension and you're following a pattern, be aware that yours will come out a little bit tighter. But what I want to go through today is how to achieve good tension. So whether your tension is tight or loose, you want to have even tension because otherwise your braid will come out twisted or lumpy um, and you'll be generally dissatisfied with it. So my first tip for achieving even tension is all about the disc and it's the condition of the disc. Now the most crucial part of the disc is the slot um, and because that is used to grip the cords and with a new disc the top slots are very very tight and with an old disc the slots are going to be very very loose. So if you're using wider cords you will find they'll stretch those slots. So my suggestion is that you right from the start have at least two discs and mark them up. Have one for your wider cords, such as your rat tails, your satin cords, those sort of things, knitting yarns maybe. And then you keep one just for your thin cords. Or in the case of the Prumi Hemo disc, there are certain slots that you use thick cords on and certain that you use thin cords on. So make sure you stick to those rules. Over time, the slots will, on any disc, start to loosen up. And so when that happens, it's time to buy a new disc and relegate your old disc to thicker cords. So this disreputable looking thing is my very first Kumihimo disc. It's hideously discolored, the slots are massive, the cat has chewed it, but I still use it because there are certain things uh, like when I'm doing a braiding with cut up uh, jersey or scarves and things like that or very thick knitting yarns that you want to be able to use that. So don't feel that your, your discs are ever unusable, they're just usable for different things. So that's the first thing, um, the condition of your disc. And it applies also to thick and thin discs as well. So you can get extra thick discs in both my disc and in the regular round disc. Um, same thing applies. If you use very thick cords in those slots, they will stretch. So keep one disc for your very finest cords. So that's the first point, the condition of your disc. The second point is the um, positioning of your cords. So I'm just going to, as an example, um, use just the basic setup for round braid with um, eight cords in the north, south, east and west positions. Now, when you put your cords in those slots, whatever cord you're using, you need to make sure that those cords are nice and tight across the face of the disc. And if they're not tight, then you need to consider using a different disc. Um, you also need to make sure that this point in the middle, so this is called the point of braiding. It starts off as the knot and then that's where the braid forms. So that is the point of braiding. And that point of braiding should be right in the middle of the hole and it should be level with the top of the disc. So that again is very important for achieving good tension. The third point I want to make is the use of a weight. Now, it's not essential to use a weight and a lot of very experienced braiders prefer not to. I do like to use a weight and the reason is it exerts an even pressure, uh, a, an even sort of downward pull on your braid. So you can just use your hand to pull down but you've got to be sure that you're exerting a very even pressure. If you attach a weight then you know that that weight is doing the job as long as you allow that weight to dangle freely. So don't hold it with your hand and as your braid grows, don't let it rest on the table. So you need to be able to move the weight up. So the clip-on ones are best so you can move them up the braid um, or you can tie them on. 
and the most popular use the most popular weight would be 50 grams that's what I use most of the time uh, for most of my braiding uh, but if you find that um, that point of braiding in the middle is starting to sag that means either your weight is too heavy or your slots are too loose so you've got to work out what the problem is there so that's the third point now the fourth point is actually when you're braiding is making sure that you keep your disc as level as possible it can be tempting to sit back in the comfy chair and have your disc up at an angle. The problem with that is that you're not exerting an equal pressure on all the cords and you'll get uneven braiding as a result in the middle. So keep your disc as you're braiding as even as possible. And the final point is really just about consistency. Uh, lots of things can affect your tension, even your mood. Um, so if you start off in a happy mood and something happens halfway through, you know, you can actually see in your braid that it will be a bit tighter after that if you've been very tense after whatever it is that has upset you. Um, stopping and starting, that's not great for a braid. Obviously, sometimes you do have to stop and start, but be aware that when you stop, your cords are relaxing, and so that can make a difference in the braid. Now, it may not be visible, and in certain situations, it may be more of a problem than others, but it's just something to be aware of. And so on that subject, what I'd suggest is when you, you're partway through braiding and you need to stop, is to rest your braid on something like a cup or a vase, so that again, you've got nice even pressure on it. So all the cords are getting the same, the same pressure and your braid is dangling freely in the middle. So there you have it. Those are my five top tension tips. Condition of your disc, cord position, use of a weight, braiding with your disc level, nearly forgot that one, didn't I? <laughs> and consistency. <laughs> um, but if you've got other ideas, why don't you tell me in the comments down below? Because I'm always interested to hear what other people have to say and everyone's comments are very, very valid. If you want to know more about the Prumihimo way of doing things with the Prumihimo disc, hop along to my website. Um, and there are lots of other things about all different sorts of braiding as well on the disc, on the plate. There are tutorials, a blog, um, lots, of, lots of helpful information. And if you, if you like this idea of my five top tips, I've got more coming up. Uh, so don't forget, if you subscribe to my channel, then you are notified of when I have new videos coming up. So until next time, bye.